We have breaking news. Officials have released a new information shows that millions of people are facing a hunger cliff. And with the loss of extra SNAP benefits and grocery prices on the rise. Many are looking to Congress to take some action, and one bill has been put forward that addresses SNAP, but it may cut benefits even more. Now, a report released by Bloomberg News shows that food banks saw the highest monthly traffic in April in its 41-year history. It is happening, and food banks nationwide are on a food stamp recipients cope with the expiration of a crisis-era extension. Now, one analyst even told Bloomberg it's a hunger cliff and inflation and ending these emergency allotments. People are really hurting. The report citing census data noted that significantly more Americans are growing hungry now than ever. And now plus. Meanwhile, food prices have continued to soar with many companies hiking prices in recent months. Increases to SNAP approved by Congress during the crisis came to an end for beneficiaries in most states at the end of March. This change cuts roughly $90 out of the average SNAP user's budget. Following news of the benefits cuts, analysts have projected that the impact could be noticeable for discount retailers and big box merchants like Walmart, and food stamps have made up to 10% of dollar store revenues and 20% of supermarket sales in lower income areas. The cuts have come at an unfortunate time with inflation continuing to rise. Since losing this, everybody... The added benefits, many families are on the edge of facing food insecurity along with families across the country, a struggle that could be further exacerbated by proposed Republican spending cuts and the stalled debt limit negotiations. As the nation rapidly approaches debt ceiling deadline, and economists say that could result in a catastrophic default, Kevin McCarthy and House Republicans launched a plan that can actually hold off and cut off many people from the food assistance programs, which would be very difficult for people to deal with. Currently, people 18 to 49 who don't have children are required to work and participate in order to get the benefits that they're allotted for. In households with dependents, 17 and younger are among those excused from SNAP work requirements in a three-month time limit, but such an exemption is also at risk of being eliminated. Nearly two dozen House Republicans co-sponsored a bill in March that would impose stricter work requirements for able people, making it harder for some Americans to receive food stamps. The bill, led by South Dakota Republican senators, would narrow work requirement exemption for households with children, allowing only those with children under 7 to qualify, instead of the current cutoff to 18. And more than 10 million people, everybody, one in four SNAP participants will be at risk of losing their food assistance benefits under this proposal. While some states let their increased benefits expire earlier, people in 32 states lost their increased crisis SNAP benefits in March. In the Parents Together Action, a nonprofit parent and family advocacy group that represents more than 3 million families, found that most households are already struggling to feed their children. Now, Congress is planning to make big changes. Starting in just a few weeks, the low income households could be set to qualify for a new type of relief. If you're struggling to pay necessities for rent, you may be eligible to receive a bonus check worth up to $500. And now 20 states have already failed to raise the minimum wage above the federal $7.25 an hour standard. 16, everybody, have more than 12% of their children living in poverty. And anti-poverty advocates say that it's a sign there's an urgent need for lawmakers to increase the funding and do more to help struggling families. Congress had the opportunity to achieve the latter by expanding the child tax credit before the end of the year. But lawmakers just didn't derive at a, at a deal with Republicans to include it in a spending bill. Some say that raising the minimum wage would not lead to as fast or drastic of an improvement. However, according to analysis, in 2019, increasing the amount to $15 an hour would lift more than 500,000 people out of poverty, and the Economic Policy Institute estimated in 2021 that if Congress passed a $15 minimum wage increase by 2025, up to 4 million people wouldn't even have to live in poverty. 1.3 million of those being children. But there are lawmakers in Congress that want to continue to send families monetary relief checks. So far, Congressman Adam Schiff has sent a letter, and he's urging the House to extend the expanded child tax credit as soon as possible. The child tax credit monthly payments are used by millions of families in California and across the country to pay for necessities including food, rent, and educational expenses. This American Rescue Plan has actually critically expanded its reach and benefits, folks, increasing monthly checks and the number of eligible recipients by removing an earnings requirement that kept the lowest income families from claiming the full credit. But so far, between July and December, child poverty was slashed by nearly 40% to reach a record low of 5.2, and now 3 million people were lifted out of poverty in a single month. But Congress has put nearly 10 million children nationwide at risk of falling deeper and deeper into poverty, as they did not pass a bill to continue this expansion. 
But as House Democrats put forward the biggest legislative priorities over the next four weeks, Adam Schiff is urging that an extension of the child tax credit is included to any year-end package. The expanded child tax credit provided a lifeline to more than 65.6 million children nationwide and nearly 8 million people in California, folks. So far, everybody... According to data from the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities, since the expansion expired, an estimated 20 million children nationwide have been unable to claim the full payment. And then we have another thing to talk about, folks. It's a Democratic lawmakers introducing the new bill to increase the state child tax credit for working families. This is done in efforts to address rising levels of poverty in the city and states of New York. And this is pretty good because it now means that stimulus payments could be sending out more and be sent out now in 2022 and 2024 and even in 2025. A bill to create the New York State Working Families Credit would actually increase the state child tax credit program to the 1500 per child from 500 and expand eligibility to children under age 4 and families making some pretty no money. Families actually would pay quarterly and since single taxpayers are making just a gross income of 25 grand or less or couples making 50,000 or less who file joint return, they would be eligible for the benefit. The State Department of Taxation and Finance would assess a family's eligibility for the credit through income filings from their annual tax return. The West also started in 2023 yet again as one of the few wealthy nations without any national paid family leave or paid sick leave program. Folks, this is bad because with Congress divided, advocates are turning to states to bolster benefits for workers and families and the Democrats attempt to pass four weeks of paid federal family leave to fall apart in the U.S. Senate, leaving a patchwork of rules for workers and businesses to navigate across. The state-by-state -state nature of this is pretty dangerous. Of the rules means that millions of Americans, millions of families are in need of help and it means that something should be done sooner than later because now, as of this year, 13 states, including D.C., have passed some paid family leave program. 14 states in D.C. have enacted the paid sick leave program, but an estimated 28 million workers still have no guaranteed paid sick time. The great Francis Perkins, FDR's labor secretary, once said, a government should aim to give all the people under its jurisdiction the best possible life. That's it. That's the job. That's what we're here to do. And I cannot stay here, stand here and say we're done yet. Because even though we've set the table for what should be the most prosperous time in New York history, if New Yorkers don't feel safe in their communities, if they can't afford to buy a home or pay their rent, then the dream stays out of reach for them. And we're already seeing signs of out-migration that we can no longer ignore. Something I know all too well from growing up in Western New York at a time when jobs were so hard to find. We cannot let that happen again.